hello hello welcome back to my channel if you enjoy the content hit that like and subscribe coming in or out the door I appreciate all the support let's get it a few days ago I reported on the three rappers that were killed in the Detroit area for anyone that hasn't seen the report let's rehash at 6 24 hours ago bodies found at a Highland Park apartment complex are confirmed to be those of three rappers who've been missing in Detroit. Armani Kelly, Montoya Givens, and Dante Wicker were supposed to perform two Saturdays ago at a club on Detroit's east side, but the event was canceled and they ended up in Highland Park where police believe they were killed. Local force Sean Lay, live with the latest on an investigation which still has many unanswered questions. Sean. Very good way of putting that. Good evening to you, Kimberly. Good evening, everyone. I've been in contact with some family members today, and of course, they're absolutely reeling with this news. At the same time, we're learning that an arrest in Warren helped break this case wide open. All I want is someone to tell me where he's at so we can go home and I can lay him to rest. That's the mother of Armani Kelly, one of the three friends missing since the week of January 21st, when three friends were on their way to perform at a Detroit nightclub, only never to be heard from again. Last night, the discovery of three bodies frozen and concealed under debris inside this boarded up apartment building in Highland Park today. The Wayne County Medical Examiner's Office identifying the bodies of Armani Kelly and his two friends, Dante Wicker and Montoya Givens. MSP investigators say the men came here, were killed here, and the bodies were concealed here. Yeah, it looks like they were, they were killed upstairs and then dumped in the basement. The key to breaking this case, Warren police coming across a stolen vehicle. It was Armani Kelly's vehicle. Warren investigators came up with evidence that led them to a 15-year-old Warren teen believed to be connected to this triple homicide. Information was developed then for Warren police to inform Detroit police to look in the basement of this building. Back here live talking with police today. That 15-year-old in Warren's already been charged in juvenile court right now, being held without bond. And investigators still asking him key questions about what connection he may have with this absolutely awful case. Also told due to the uh, conditions of the bodies, how they were found, they were identified today through fingerprints. And again, this case now, Kimberly, moving much faster. We're keeping an eye on more arrests that could be coming quite soon. Back to you. And we know there's certainly more to come on this. We'll be following it. Thanks, Sean. First off, I want to dispel the rumor that they were never scheduled to rap at Lounge 31. People were saying that the booking was a setup and that they were never scheduled to play at the lounge. This isn't true. They were scheduled to play. Here's the flyer that the mixed cat Marley Woot posted. Next, there are a lot of theories swirling around what happened to these dudes and what got them killed. Many are speculating that the mixed cat Armani, aka Marley Wu, was the initial target and that the others were collateral. This theory stems from the fact that Marley Wu had a very suspect conversation with some dudes that seemed to not be feeling him and may have even been plotting on him. The one thing a lot of you pointed out was that the one dude made a comment about how Marley Ruth had a podcast that he was talking way too much on. He didn't exactly say those words, but it was definitely implied. He came home and got on a helicopter. That's some real nigga shit. Hey, no, no, you came home and did the podcast though. In addition to that slick comment, the dudes also called Marley Ruth out for wearing a red bandana with food designs in it. If y'all don't know, a blood gang member, which Marley claimed to be, can't wear anything blue because their blood gang represents red, as in the color of blood. Marley got called out for this bandana and was told that he needed a violation, which is a term that they use for punishment for their wrongdoing. Real life. Oh, man. These we gonna niggas are shit. We gonna, touch, we gonna touch the shoot em up bang bang money too. You about to, you gonna you gonna put that on your next scene? I mean on your next uh your next uh uh Let's go. You know, if you're you on your podcast, 
Bro, if, 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 if you go up, nigga, if you win, nigga, I'm gonna just you be can, a supporter. You can do the, you can do the, 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 the bad, bad shit. I'll be telling oh. people about the bad, bad shit. You, you'll be supreme, right? And I'll be John Rue out there singing and dancing and shit. Hey. Bro, see, this why everything go left. <laughs> Every time, bro. It's a room full of gangsters, and you are on this bitch plane. Why not? Like, I'll like be living my life. I'll be living my life, though. I'm just living my life. I'm living bro, my, my life. But we, we, nigga, I was just in that. We was all just. He was just in that bitch. That nigga was just in that bitch. My nigga, that should be what's up, bro. What the fuck is that? Oh, yeah. I don't know. What is? Lean, lean back. Lean back. What the fuck? Nigga, this is just a start, bro. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Hell no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. No, no sir. No, you got no, sir. Beat, you can't, no, nigga. You can't, that you can't, shit was the swag. That shit was the sauce. You don't do that. Don't do that. Me. That shit was the sauce, nigga. I'm saying, don't like. Don't do Come on, man. Yeah. You moving. You moving. You moving. Bold as hell over there. That's that, I'm, no, I ain't going that, That's that VVM shit. Oh, he huh? said it. That's that bad guy shit. That's, uh, oh, yeah. I'm huh? saying, though, you, oh, yeah. you, 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 you putting on for them niggas. You, I, I almost, I almost put my mask on. You niggas need to be a violation. No, no sir. Damn. After doing some more digging, I found out that Marley Whoop's podcast was about him telling so-called prison stories. But to me, it seems like he was talking way too much and exposing way too many secrets. Calling out names, talking about snitches, and everything. The theory is that this podcast and Marley's Loose Lips is what got him killed. We gonna keep playing like this, dog? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If anybody take that shit personal, that shit what it is, you feel me? I don't be feeling that shit. Niggas be out here, like, I don't get it. Y'all niggas be seeing them motherfucking stories, man. I know y'all be seeing these niggas, man, pretending like, like, oh, that nigga standing up on this case. Like, bro, that nigga bug. We, we gonna keep that shit a secret? Like, what's going on? I don't fuck with it. Man, all these niggas, all these niggas, man, talking about, like, I don't know, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I just be seeing that shit, bro. I be seeing that shit, and I'm like, I can't fuck with it, man. We gonna just keep this shit a secret. The nigga I don't talk about, right? I ain't gonna lie to y'all niggas, man. Me and Dog ain't really had no issues like that. But the nigga I'm talking about, a specific nigga, man, I told him that shit in prison. You feel me? We was on the yard together, you know what I'm saying? I looked at him, and I put that nigga on the floor. Like, I ain't got your paperwork, but I know what I know. And that nigga tried to put it on another nigga. Uh, you try to put on another nigga, the nigga named Debo Money. Uh, uh, this shit, there you go, right there. I'm talking about Debo, man. That nigga, you try to put it on Debo Money, though. And I know Debo Money, man. Like, I know this nigga. You know what I'm saying? That nigga was the first nigga ever put me in the studio. I know Debo Money. Like, that's my, that's my nigga, bro. I fuck with Debo. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie. He ain't, he ain't holler back at me since I've been home. You feel me? I popped at him a couple times, but that nigga ain't hit me. And no bullshit. That nigga got one song on a, one of his mixtapes from back in the day. I ain't gonna lie, that nigga stole my song. <laughs> I wrote that bitch in the county. We was in Ian County and Max. I wrote that song, and that nigga, he had re rock my shit. He re rock my verse. J Killer D, you feel me? Uh, Big Boss Pimp Disciple, you feel me, out of Chicago. That nigga was across the hall from me just recently. I actually met him in 2016 when I first went to St. Louis. We was on the same rock. At the time, I wasn't mobbing with the homies for us. I, I felt like it was some weird shit. It felt like it was a lot of crash dummyism. And at the time, I'm fresh to the joint. I was banging in the streets. So, you know, mind you, I wasn't banging properly, but I was still banging in the streets. And I wasn't keen on just leaning into whatever these niggas got going on. And um, on top of that, a lot of Lansing niggas are GDs. A lot of Northside Lansing niggas are GDs. So I was fucking with all Lansing niggas. There's a good handful there. And uh, I got tapped in with Killer. You know what I'm saying? I actually ran back into him at Berga right before the end of my bit. The nigga basically seen the nigga grow up from when I first came to the joint to where a nigga was seasoned around that bitch. But um, Killer, one thing he always told me, that shit stick with me to this day. And it's like the personification of my favorite quote, which is, perfection is the enemy of completion. Killer always said, man, if you broke, 
and you got something in your cell worth fifty dollars, sell that shit and hustle your way up onto some old shit. Don't hold on to nothing, thinking that man, I'm a I'm a wait to the right time and I'm a bam niggas heads with that shit. Never do that. Never do that. He always said like his main thing was like nigga. If you, you want to rap, steal somebody beat them. Fuck it. Nigga, if they sue you, nigga, that's a tomorrow issue. That's not a today issue. Nigga, if you got a book in your cell, go sell that bitch for however much you can and take that money and flip that shit. You know what I'm saying? That nigga was all about action. That's what he thought about. That's how he moved. It was about what you can do right now. Because you can sit here and think and wait for the perfect moment, but you're not going to get shit done. You know what I'm saying? So you got to move. You got to be about action. Um, another mentor, like when I first was at uh, St. Louis around killing shit, it's a homie name. Uh, he not a homie, but he actually an old school lore nigga. But his name uh, Matthew Macon, aka Chili Chill. You know what I'm saying? Brazy thing is, the nigga is actually like a serial killer in Lansing. You know, well known nigga. He's a good nigga though. They try to put some little weird shit on his name. I'm here. I would speak against that shit if niggas told it to me. But long story short, real solid nigga. Man, Chili basically, this nigga Chili like 6'2", like two, I say like 250. I promise you, this nigga don't got an ounce of fat on him. Nigga out here doing sets of 25s on the pull-ups, do a thousand push-ups before we even go to Big Yard. Big nigga, you know what I'm saying? Niggas was spooked of him too. He got five nats, you know what I'm saying? Five natural licenses, you know what I'm saying? The nigga never, ever, 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 ever bumming home. But he a real solid nigga, man. And that nigga gave me a lot of game, like taught me how to make suckers, taught me how to make fudge. He taught me how to make taffy, even though I forgot, you know what I'm saying? No disrespect, but that sucker shit, I made at least about $2,500 throughout my whole bit just selling suckers on yard. You feel me? Ran that bitch up multiple times. He taught me how to jail, you feel me? How to cook up. That nigga taught me all the basics that you need to know going to prison, how to survive, you feel me? How to peep shit, how to move around certain shit, everything. Nigga's a real solid ass nigga. Fucking love that nigga. That's my baby. You know what I'm saying? I ain't been able to do what I can do because, you know, obviously I'm on parole. Can't contact felons. But as soon as I'm off, I'm on that nigga shit, bro. That's my baby. One nigga I say, I don't know the nigga name, his real name. Never learned it. Never knew his number. But we was in Buddhist service at Berger, level five, in like 2017, 18. But the nigga name, he called himself Master Son. Master son, nigga from Detroit, old school nigga, long, long dress. I'm talking about real in tune. I'm telling you, this nigga knew some shit. Crazy shit. But the shit I know y'all niggas interested in with, first off, them sexual predators. So, sexual predators, I don't know the niggas, the individuals, you know what I'm saying? But these, there's some long standing names in Michigan prison that everybody done heard of. First of all, nigga Pussycat. Now, the nigga Pussycat, he an old nigga. I think he like a Mobite or a Melanic or some shit. He a Muslim of some sort. But the nigga used to, like, he was a deadly motherfucker on the yard. They said Dog used to, he like light-skinned niggas with hair that gang bang. So, I'd have been in trouble back in the day. But uh, uh, the dude Pussycat, like, basically his whole scheme was, this, these was niggas who was aggressively taking booty. This nigga Pussycat would get you to work out with him and get you all sore so you really, you know what I'm saying, you can't really do nothing no more and take the booty. Niggas taking booty on yard. An aggressive predator. Second, it's another nigga named New York. Nah, New York go by another name I can't think of, but dog was a weird fag. Cause, and I don't say that disrespectfully, I just say that before that's what we call them niggas. But nigga was a weirdo, like, he, he liked the white boys. But they said, like, he a big-ass dude, dude, like, 260, 6'3". I know they said a nigga going around knocking white boys out, and then he'll, like, get them aroused, and he'll play the girl. You know what I'm saying? He wanted to be the girl, but he was aggressively taking whatever the fuck he was into. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, they got, like, these weird niggas where, like, they do, like, weird shit. Like, nigga go hoop without no drawers on. Like, you got 
Not all shorts. You trying to guard, like, stick D to niggas, you know what I'm saying? But you really trying to stick D to niggas, you feel me? So you got to be aware of that weird shit, you feel me? And a lot of older Muslim groups, they got that stigma of being homosexual or having homosexual people in their group. You know, and it's a hit and miss for some of them do. You know what I'm saying? Let's be real about this shit. Some of them niggas is. Some just some, it's some old gay niggas that's hiding behind that religious service. Nah, you can't really stamp the whole organization as that, but shit happen and niggas talk so that's how I play out most of the time but other than that it's a lot of weird shit though more than anything you feel me like uh, a lot of niggas who be gang banging so, well not a lot of niggas but there's a good portion of niggas who be gang banging be super gangsta ass niggas but then they be in the room with a fag and that freak shit come out you fuck they bag and you know some niggas kind of struck it off like oh I was in the room dog I was drunk Ooh, but you know if Anybody in prison to tell you if you game banging and you in the room with a fag, you gotta move up out of there. You gotta move up out of there today. You know what I'm saying? Catch a refusal lock ticket. Don't stay the night in that bitch. You know what I'm saying? That shit, even if it's not like that, I'm gonna put that shit on your name and that's how you gonna have to deal with that shit. All I do is work out in the hall. Nigga, the homie Marmar, I got on the rock with him and he kept calling me. I'm like, bro, I gotta holler at you later. I gotta finish the workout. Mandos. He like, what? Nigga, it's like 100 degrees. Yeah, AKA Marley Wu. I done been getting a couple uh, little messages from people and shit. They asked me, you know, how I'm Marley Wu on this page, but I'm Marley uh, B. Hoover on the other one. I know this, you know, they ain't from Lansing, so I don't really know this. I'm uh, from Turner Street, you know what I'm saying? North Lansing, everybody know North Lansing, GD Land. So I grew up around all them niggas, you feel me? I ain't never been a G. Everybody knew I was whoop stepping around that bitch, but you know, that's how I fuck with you, know what I'm saying? That's how I grew up, dealing with them people, you know what I'm saying? And you know, that's where I got all the love from, all the knowledge I got from them niggas, you know what I'm saying? So that Hoover shit was just some shit we used to say unknowingly when we was kids. You know, we used to say that to each other when we was here licks robbing. You know what I'm saying? We in the house, instead of calling each other name, we just called out, hey Hoover, you got, hey Hoover, you know what I'm saying? You be seeing my little shit, I say free Hoover, that's my nigga Narion, you know what I'm saying? Narion Costone, that's a real nigga, man, real solid, turn the street nigga, you know what I'm saying? I would say I'm the face of that bitch, turn the street, but I can't even play that nigga Narion, big dog around that bitch, especially around me. But, um, you know, I just, Always mess with the G's, man. Even in prison, I used to get into it with the, some of the dogs for us. You know, they felt like I was wishy-washy or something. I'm just like, shit, I fuck with niggas who fuck with me. And I ain't finna, you know, tell my dick just to impress nobody, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to switch up. If I say I fuck with you, I mean that shit. That's something you gotta fuck up. You gotta fuck that love up for me to cut you off. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanna put that shit out there and let y'all know, just saying, get a little backstory. Uh, the EP dropped September 5th. Hard rolls, you know what I'm saying? Catch me on Marley Whoop, you know what I'm saying? On Facebook. I ain't got no, uh, I do got an instant. Matter of fact, I think it's Whoop Marley. I can't remember. I just, I just, I mind you, I just came home like a month, month and a half ago. So I'm just really trying to figure this shit out still. You know what I'm saying? Keep up with me, you can, man. I appreciate y'all. And uh, to anybody that's in the way out there, man, just go sit down. Like, go ahead, man. You fucking up the game for real niggas. There's a dude, white dude, named BC. He like a baker or something. He work in the kitchen, and I guess he wasn't trying to pass the shit out. Like, he was being petty with the bag or whatever. I don't know the details. I wasn't in the loop. But uh, all I remember is we walking back from the towel wall, and someone stabbed him, like, hit him in his head. Now, they had a big-ass straight shooter. I'm talking about this probably, like, got to be, like, 10 inches long. Damn near a foot, for real. Big-ass straight shooter. Long, thin, thin-ass piece. And, uh... He thought someone punched him. So he's like, damn, what the fuck, man? What the fuck's going on? Walking, he we kept he keep walking. He don't even know he got an antenna outside his head. He's like a robot. We get in the, we get right to the door. It's a dude named Black Bottom. Dark skinned dude. He like ABC. Hey, BC like, what's up? He like, hey, for before you go in there, man, let me get that knife out your head. He was like, what? Oh, Big long ass bitch hanging out his head like an antenna, and like he tried to pull it out, and his shit got the leak and drenched this shit. His whole coat bloodied as hell. But uh, that was like my first week in prison, at like a real prison out of quarantine. So, you know that shit. That's the main thing. 
when you hear stories about it, it's it's not necessarily intimidating because everybody, most of the time, don't nobody know what they're doing. You just come to prison or there's people who double back and it's just so it's really not, it's not no like a, a serious place of like a threat, but it's a serious place for like, like your mental state, you know what I'm saying? That'll fuck you up. For us, it's, it's people who jump off the tier and they just can't take it. They don't think they can jump in, you know what I'm saying, and, and do prison. So they jump off trying to kill themselves from the fourth tier. And I didn't witness somebody do it, but I was going to shower and I was on the steps and the steps is all the way at the end to the side. So like the tier would be behind you, you feel me, before you, you say you wouldn't see it, but I'm coming down the steps and I hear this shit like, bah, I'm like, oh, what the fuck? So I shoot down that bitch. What's going on? Look. And right, the nigga, dude jumped off that bitch. They had to clear us out, lock us all down, clean that shit up. And when we after that, we all came back out for shower. And um, shower early as hell. And just so you know, right, this is this is an ongoing joke that never stopped. You know what I'm saying? If somebody don't know what's going on, you always tell them like, hey, bro, when you go to shower, you can have your clothes with you, but you gotta go down there butt naked, you know what I'm saying, I'm swear to God, or they won't, they're not going, they're going to tell you you got to turn around, because they don't think you're going to shower, they think you bullshit, so, <laughs> you don't understand how many motherfuckers we got like that, like, yeah, bro, you got to go down there butt ass naked, bro, <laughs> or tell them they got to go in their underwear, and mind you, you just got to prison, so you only got whitey tidies and shit, they call the dun to us you feel me, like the Superman, da -da -da -da. we got them bitches on, so we done talk motherfuckers into that shit, that should be hilarious, but, um, you go down, I go down that bitch, and it's a big ass little crack on the floor. I'm like, what the fuck? And dog was like, yeah, that's where the guy jumped off the tear from, man. Killed himself. So it is like a, a test of mental fortitude at that point. Um, other than that, the gang life isn't really heavy in that bitch. It's all the, most of the COs is assholes. There's one CO I know, and I never forget his name, you know what I'm saying, for certain reasons, but nigga, dog name was Blood. Bull as hell. Went on shit, bro. He ain't give a fuck about nothing. He was just doing his time, you know what I'm saying, working, clocking in, clocking out. Now, at the time I went in there, I actually met one of my homeboys there, Tafazo Juan Muzumundo, Fazo, you know what I'm saying, GR dude, but he really from Zimbabwe. I think he got like 17 years or something. He got a bit. But um, long story short, me and him clicked and we kind of fucked with each other from like my homeboy, fucked with his homeboy, fucked with him, you know what I'm saying? And me and him ended up gone boo. But then both our homeboys rolled out, you know, we had quarantine. You're not going to be there for long at all. Me and Fazo got cool as hell. That's my baby. I still still keep his contact with him and shit. But um, so basically, I remember I seen a, I'm, I'm right next door to this older BMF dude. He just came from the feds and he coming back to do the state time now. So this was one of the funniest shits I ever seen. So um, he, he a tough motherfucker, bro. He done did through the, went through the feds, dragged his nuts. And uh, he just an older, smooth nigga. Like he just do what he doing. You know what I'm saying? He a real MA. Like, I'm not gonna play with you, man. This how I move and stay the fuck out my way. So uh, it's a CO in our unit. He a whole ass motherfucker. I can't remember his name no more, the BMF dude. He was a smart dude, gave me a little game about how to jail. I remember this, a CO, Officer Jeffries. So the BMF dude come out of his cell one day and uh, the uh, CO, Jeffrey, he a hoe. I'm talking about he a real bitch. And dog, like he, he a real bitch. Like he be on petty shit. I guess that like, he be trying to break you so that you be ready for prison. Like this how, you know, see it like almost like on some boot camp shit, but ain't nobody trying to hear that shit. So Jeffrey's come up that bitch, he talking crazy. And him and uh, the BMF dude get into it right in front of our cell. So uh, he was like, what, what did you say to me? What did you say to me? He like, I won't even talk to you. He like, what's your name? The BMF guy like, what's your name? He like, Jeffrey. He's like, well, hello, how about this? How about Officer Jeffrey's mind his own fucking business because I'm not talking to Officer Jeffrey's, all right? And he was like flustered. He ain't know what to do. He's like, it turned around, mind you, we at the end of the tier, so the little back exit, fire escape right there, he shoot into that bitch and we leave. So we all laughing, like, <laughs> we walk out that bitch, we go down the whole thing. So mind you, this motherfucking tier long as fuck. It's almost as long as a football field. It's probably, I say like 60 or 80 yards, you feel me? It's long as fuck. So we walk down there, it's like 30 cells up there. So we walk down that bitch, go down the steps, 
when we get to the <laughs> to the front door, we in two south, so we gotta go around front to the foot. This is 2014. Once I was closed, they were for doing repairs and shit. So all you see is the gate open, swing up like <laughs> Jeffries run up on the BMF nigga. He like, well, I, I, Officer Jeffries is not gonna mind this business. <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> we in that bitch laughing like, bro, that shit took you like, it's been like four minutes now. It was a long ass walk. We slow rolling too. We moving slow as shit. I'm like, bro, you just ran from all the way up there and you was thinking about that shit the whole time. <laughs> So we hear that bitch crying, laughing, like, man, what the fuck? And dog, uh, the BMF dude kind of flared up, like, man, let's get the fuck out of my face before I smack the shit out your stupid ass. He was like, what? Dog, the CO looking spooked. So he ended up hitting his butt, and boop. Like, four COs walk up on him, sergeant, and uh, BMF dude, like, listen, man, I ain't about to hear all that shit. Listen, you tell that nigga to fuck out my face, say the fuck out my way, before I'm gonna fuck him up. And he, like, man, you can't talk about COs like that, bro. That's You gotta cuff up. I gotta take you to the hall. <laughs> So they ended up shooting him out, but he was a bull nigga. And um, like I said, bro, this quarantine is a cakewalk. Quarantine is a real cakewalk. Okay, Marley was talking way too much. I'm sorry, but even as a female, I know not to talk this much. Calling names and exposing gang and prison secrets. Look, I don't know if this guy, the guy's killed, but it definitely is not a good look for any gang member or so-called thug to be talking this much. Like I said in my previous video, Marley seemed to be playing a thug role. I ran into a video of him rapping that proved my point. The guy was surrounded by white men rapping about ops, the gang, and nigga shit. His work. I don't know about y'all, but this clip doesn't seem right with me. Let's take a look. shit up i truly hope that dudes wake up and stop idolizing thug life i stand by the fact that these deaths could have been prevented since we can't turn back the hands of time to save these guys let's help the future generation the best that we can to understand that life ain't it anyway i hope they find the killers because even if he was talking too much or cosplaying as a thug. Them guys didn't deserve to be killed. And that's period. Well, thank you for pulling up. Hit that like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.